So this video is on proofs. Now proofs come up all the time at A level. You need to know the correct way in order to write them. Now most proofs are based on content you'll learn in other chapters in A level maths. But there are a couple of odd examples of kind of special examples that we'll go through in this video. Now firstly, I'm just going to go through some general tips. Some general tips and notes for proofs. The first one, and this is probably one of the most fundamental things with proofs, is that after you've proved it, after you've done your proof and you've done the method, you must write a statement at the end. This is just how you do proofs. You just need to do a statement at the end. And all this statement is, is just saying that, there, that you've done the proof. So this statement should be in the form, therefore, these three little dots here, if you don't know, uh, stand for therefore. It's just kind of a shorthand way of saying uh, the word therefore. And I always uh, do it in my proofs because it's a shorthand way of saying it. it's just a lot quicker. I mean, say, if you want to, you can just write the word therefore. Um, but yeah, this, this little uh, symbol here, it just means uh, the word therefore. So the statement should be therefore and then the proof. I just repeat what the, I just write down and repeat what the proof actually is, what the question actually was. That's all the statement needs to be. Uh, we're going to go through a load of examples of proofs in this video uh, and uh, you'll see uh, loads of examples of what these statements um, look like. The second tip is that you cannot assume the proof. You cannot assume the proof. The specific part of the question that you're trying to prove, you cannot assume it and therefore you cannot use that specific part in your actual answer and in the actual um, proof. This is what you're trying to reach. You cannot actually use it. This is the end point. You cannot actually use it in your method and in your proof. So, for example, let's say uh, that we had a question and the question was if the equation x squared plus 3x plus k is equal to 0, where k is a constant, has one root, prove that k is equal to 9 over 4. So this is a typical proof question. Now what you cannot do in a, a proof question is you cannot just say, okay, well k is equal to 9 over 4, so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to sub in k, uh, k as 9 over 4, and then I'm just going to prove that this has one root. You can't do that. You can't do that. You cannot assume this specific part here, the proof part of 9 over 4. You can't do that because this is the end point that we're trying to reach. So in order to do proofs, you can use the rest of it, you can use this equation, and you can, you can um, use the fact that it only has one root in your answer, but you cannot use the fact that k is equal to 9 over 4. This is the specific part of the proof that you're trying to prove, and you have to. this is your end point, you cannot use it in the question. The third tip is that sometimes you need to use words and sentences. Basically, what a proof is, is a proof is a lot like an instruction manual. You need to make sure that it is easy to follow and that it is clear. This is the whole point of a proof. The whole point of a proof is basically that someone needs to be able to read it, understand and go through each step and understand the proof. And that's kind of why it's uh, like an instruction manual. And you need to make sure it's easy to follow and all of the steps are clear for them to be able to follow the proof and understand uh, stepwise how you've done uh, the proof. And sometimes uh, you need to use words and sentences in order to make it easier to follow and make it uh, clearer. So for example, if you were going to use a specific fact in the question that they have gotten given to you, the way you have to use this is you have to write down that specific part that you're using, the specific part of the question and just write that down and then continue with your method. Write that down when you're specifically going to use that in your method because that makes it uh, easier to follow and it makes the steps clearer. It kind of makes it clearer as to uh, how you've done that and that you're using that uh, specific part now and kind of where you've got it from. And that's um, that's kind of when you use words and sentences. We're going to go through loads of examples in this video of proofs. Hopefully that will make it um, a bit more easier to understand how you use words and sentences. Um, so you need to make uh, your proofs clear. The way that I check 
um, after I've done a proof to make sure it is clear enough is I make sure that an A level math student would be able to follow it. That's kind of like the level of um, clearness with your proof that you need to get is that an A level math student would be able to follow it. The fourth tip is that you need to cover all possibilities. You need to cover all possibilities and all possible things that could occur and like all possible numbers. So you need to think of when you're doing your proof is could there be any specific examples that I need to consider. So for example in 7.4 in chapter 7 in example 10 they specifically say in this in their proof that the gradients are different so the three points are not collinear. Basically the term collinear just basically means that if you have three points like this and you can draw a line through all three of them, a one straight line through all three of them like this, that basically means that they're um, collinear. Um, and the point of the question is you're trying to prove that three points are the vertices of a triangle. If they're collinear like this, obviously they're not the vertices of a triangle because you can't draw a triangle using these three uh, vertices or corners because you can't do it. You can't, you can't do it because you can only draw a line. You just cannot draw a triangle um, through it. And this is a special example that you need to consider because this is possible and you need to consider it. And I guarantee that if you don't consider that and write just that small little sentence there, if you don't write that small little sentence, there is a strong possibility that you could lose a mark because with proofs, you need to cover all possibilities. Another example is with example 11 is when they specifically consider when k is equal to zero. And this is because you need to cover all possibilities. You need to think of if there are any special examples that you haven't considered yet that you need to consider could happen. And k equals zero is a possibility. Uh, it's kind of like a special example that you need to consider. And I guarantee again, if you don't consider that and write that down in uh, an exam question, in if that question was an exam question, I would suspect there's a strong possibility that you could lose a mark because the point with proofs is that you need to cover all possibilities. The fifth tip is that four identities, an identity is when it has this sign here in the question, this kind of equal sign that kind of has like three lines, four identity proofs. To prove uh, identity uh, proofs, to prove, you need to start on one side of the identity and mathematically go to the other side. You need to start on one side of the identity and uh, go to the other side. The important thing of identities is that you cannot move things around from one side of the identity to the other, like it's an equals or an inequality sign. You can't do that. That's not how um, identities work. The point of an identity proof is that you're meant to go from one side to the other. You can start on whatever side you like. So you can start on the left-hand side and go to the right-hand side, or you could start on the right-hand side and go to the left-hand side. It's your choice based on what one you think looks easier. It doesn't matter as long as you go from one side to the other, but you cannot move stuff around the identity sign. You cannot move stuff around like this is an equals or uh, an inequality sign. We'll do an example of an identity uh, proof in this video. Um, for equals and uh, inequality sign, you can still move side. You can still uh, use both sides and move stuff around uh, both sides in your answer. But the one thing you need to remember is that you cannot use the uh, equation or uh, inequality that you're specifically trying to prove because then you're undermining. Uh, tip 2.2 is that you cannot assume the proof. So, for example, let's pretend that uh, the proof uh, was a uh, proof for all values of x that x squared plus 9 is bigger than or equal to 6x. What you can't do for this proof is say, okay, well, let's move 6x to the other side and do x squared minus 6x plus 9 is bigger than or equal to 0. You can't do that because then you are assuming the proof. The specific point in point 2 is that you cannot assume your proof and you cannot use this in your answer. You have to get to this as an end point. You cannot use the actual inequality that you are trying to prove in your in your actual proof. 
really quick, something I just want to clarify, and these are the two questions that we've already considered in uh, this video. 4.2, we cannot assume the proof. We cannot assume the specific uh, point, the specific thing that we are trying to prove. So for uh, the first question, it is this. We cannot assume that x squared plus 9 is bigger than or equal to uh, 6x, because this is the specific thing that we are trying to prove. So therefore, we cannot actually use that in our method and in our proof. That is the end point. We cannot use it in our proof and for the second question uh, we are trying to prove that k is equal to 9 over 4 so we cannot use uh, the fact that k is equal to 9 over 4 in our proof that is the end point that is the point we're trying to reach we can't assume it and we cannot use it in our method and we can't use it in our proof but we are allowed to use any other information that the question does give us because we're not assuming the proof there the proofs are the, the uh, specific parts that we need to prove are these parts we can use the other information in the question so for part two, we are allowed to use the fact that x squared plus 3x plus k is equal to zero. As we don't need to, this isn't, a, we're not proving this. We're proving that k is equal to 9 over 4. We're not uh, proving that x squared plus 3x plus k um, is equal to zero. And we're allowed to use uh, the fact that uh, the equation uh, only has one root. Because again, that is not what we're trying to prove. Uh, that is um, that is just a part of the question that it's giving us. So we're allowed to use that. The only thing that I will say is um, like... Uh, uh, in point three, when you are going to use that in your proof, you should write it down so uh, it's, it's easy to follow and clear, like I've already said, like, like point three. Um, in um, uh, the first question, however, there isn't actually really any information that you can use in the question uh, to help with your proof because you can't use this and there's not really any other like useful information. The thing that you, you are basically just trying to prove that x squared plus 9 is bigger than or equal to uh, 6x and you're not allowed to use that. And we'll go through a question very similar um, to question one. We'll go through uh, an inequalities uh, question in this video. The sixth tip is that if n is a positive integer, and as uh, an integer is a whole number, remember, so if n is a positive whole number, then n can be used to class sets of numbers. So, for example... 2n and 2n plus 2 are always going to be even. And this makes sense when you think about it because uh, as n, remember, is a positive integer, no matter what uh, the value of n is, no matter what positive uh, integer it is going to be, if you times a positive integer by 2, it is going to be a multiple of 2 and therefore it is going to be even. Obviously, if you times anything by 2, it is going to be even. And then as 2n is even, if you plus 2 to it, that is also going to be even. If you want to, you can sub in some values for n in order to see this, but hopefully you can see this because if you times a number by 2, it is going to be even. And 2n plus 1 and 2n minus 1 are also always going to to be odd. Again, uh, you can sub into values if you want to, but because 2n is even, if you plus uh, 1 or minus 1 to an even number, it is going to become an odd number. Now, you can do this in other ways of n, to, uh, and n can be used to class all sorts of um, sets of numbers. It can be used to class a lot of sets of numbers. Um, this might not make too much sense of its own uh, tip 6. Um, we'll go uh, through this in a lot more detail in this video um, later in this video. We'll go through it in a lot more detail. The seventh tip is that completing the square is useful for proving if something is positive or negative. This comes up quite a lot um, and we'll go through uh, an example in this video. And tip 8, and I, I really hate saying this because I know people get really annoyed by it, but annoyingly the best way to get better at proofs Honestly, I'm not just saying this because I want you to do work or anything like that. Honestly, the best way to get better at proofs is just to do as many questions as 
possible. If you do as lots and lots of proof questions, you will really start to understand and master how to write them and how to approach them and just how to do proof questions in general. So for example, there are loads of proof questions in the book. So do loads of these um, and they will really help you understand and write proofs.